My local grocery store is closing after all the employees refuse to get vaccinated. The owner is married to an executive advisor who said they were not allowed to get Moderno or J&J. There is a food shortage in the area and residents have been trading their personal belongings for a bite to eat. Share this video to end capitalism forever. If we don't act now, we will be next. All right, Shalom. This is a brother in the hall here from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rokakodash. The bonus to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is 2nd Edges chapter 15 and verse 1. And it reads, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith Yahweh by Shemel Shai, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. All right, and through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, we are living in the midst of prophecy. All right, the video you just saw was a shortage of one grocery store. All right, and um, through the spirit, uh, this all uh, sparked um, my um, interest through the spirit after hearing about the recent gas shortages. You know, and uh, the elder, you know, the apostles, the apostle of Ram Lab has went into this, you know, and uh, other uh, various elders in uh, Akim have went into this. And I want to touch it as well through the spirit because we're in a time of prophecy. And one thing that um, brothers have been bringing out, uh, the, Zuqu the Zuquans as well, is that, you know, with a, a famine, a famine doesn't have to be caused by a shortage of crops, a shortage of um, harvest, you know. And um, what we're seeing is how fragile this uh, supply chain is and ultimately the the thing that people call normal the way society lives and exists and how how um confident people are in this fickle system all right matter of fact it reminds me of this this is isaiah 36 and i'll start at uh verse 5 i say says thou but they are but vain words i have counsel and strength for war now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Because our people are rebelling against Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And look at the alternative. Our people's alternative is this system. <laughs> and and in, in, a, in the midst of like a, a day or two days of a pipeline and a supply chain being uh, broken through this hack. You know, um, look how fragile this system really is, man. And our people would rather have this fragile system and be confident in this system, confident enough to rebel against the creator of all things, man. You know, the Lord called our people um, a rebellious, stiff-necked, sottish. And the Lord is, is really mocking our people when he says this. All right. Again, Isaiah 36 and 5. I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom doth thou trust? That thou rebellest against me. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. And all of our people who trust in Babylon the Great are, are being made shame, all right? The Lord said that uh, this uh, the trust that you have in the spirit of Egypt, roughly paraphrasing, will be your shame, man. And our people trust in this place and this place, the Lord compared it to a broken reed, man. And this supply chain break is just one example of many. All right. And I want to go into this article as well. All right. This is on uh, WRAL.com and it says delivery of food medicine could be affected by gas shortage. All right. Now. I'm not going to. Uh play this entire video but i just want to uh, go into a little bit of it 
All right, so let me run it back. The Arthur continues our coverage from Five Points with the trickle-down effect this is having on many different types of businesses. Keely, what have you seen today? It really is incredible as to how much this is actually impacting. So this BP here on Glenwood shut down a few hours ago. As far as immediate impacts to businesses, takeout deliveries are taking a hit. Food service company Delivery Hero tells me that some of their drivers didn't even show up today. So your tacos might be a little late. The real problem, though, comes when this continues. Then it's going to start to impact things like nonprofits, which deliver meals to the homeless, or pharmaceutical companies that help deliver important drugs to the people who need it. We're going to be in a world where we're in problems if we don't, aren't able to get gas. Every day, Durham Rescue Mission travels to numerous grocery stores to pick up day-old food. We're going to Food Lion, we're going to Harris Teeter, we're going to Target, to Walmart. Food that feeds nearly 400 hungry mouths daily. How much longer do you have until you will need to refuel and you, or you won't be able to get people food? Well, assuming we got all our trucks filled up today, I feel confident we can go through uh, so what's today? Today's Tuesday, maybe Thursday. Another vulnerable population that could take a major hit if the fuel frenzy persists. Folks who rely on. And that shows you, man, you know, through the spirit, I, I'm not going to go into the whole video, but that shows you through the spirit, man, how how fragile this place really is, man. This place doesn't have long, man. All right. Matter of fact. Oh, that was a perfect video. That's a perfect segue. All right. Because you can see uh, this as well. All right, let me go into it. It's lucky. Let me see if I can skip this. We begin tonight with WRL's Kirsten Gutierrez, who is covering the frustration and anger this interruption in supply and overwhelming demand is causing drivers. Kirsten? Gerald Rashad, the man who took this viral video, lives here in Nightdale, and while he didn't want to go on camera tonight, he tells me that it all started while he was waiting in line here at this marathon when a fight broke out between a man and woman at pump number 10. This is the video posted on Instagram. Witness Rashawn says he was waiting to get gas at this marathon in Nightdale around 2 this afternoon when a woman in the white car you see here tried to cut the long line. When no one would let her in, Rashad says she ran into the front driver's side of this gray Honda at pump 10. He tells us after crashing into the man's car, the woman got out and spit on the man while yelling. As you can see in the video, the man gets out of the car and then spits back at the woman. The witness tells us that's when the fight broke out. As you can see, the two push and pull at each other. The woman even ripping the man's shirt before Rashad says police arrived. From the video, you can see the man toss what looks like the woman's cell phone into the street. And it shows you, man, how uh, how civilized these people really aren't, man. And when when shit really hits the fan, excuse my French, that's when you're going to find out none of these people um, love each other. All right. The scriptures say the love of many shall wax cold, man. All right. And what you're going to find out is these people don't really love each other. And this idea of a melting pot where everybody is civilized is fragile, just like that broken reed spoken of in Isaiah, man. All right. Now, this is uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And the Lord, like he said in uh, Isaiah, the 19th chapter, is stirring up a perverse spirit, man. All right. The spirit of Egypt is failing. And every attempt to pump this system back up, every attempt to um, give this system life through the distractions of sports and entertainment, the spirit of mirth is leaving this place quickly. All right. Now, through the spirit and poverty out by Shemel Shai, um, it's very possible that the elites are um, more than likely behind this uh, pipeline ordeal um, to uh, stir up that fear so that they can uh, implement more agendas for regulation and control like the Zaquan's uh, WW3 algorithm that he released earlier today, man. And what you're finding out is that this place is fickle. It's, it's, it's finished, really, man. All right, when you really think about it, let's go to uh, Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. And uh, that, that shows you an example as well of how desperate people get uh, in the midst of uh, uncertainty 
and how a lot of these women are going to get trodden underfoot because they're going to believe that they still have this um, privilege that they enjoy in this civilized society. And a lot of women are going to be open for a rude awakening. All right. That, that woman that spit on that man, she thought that, you know, she was just going to be able to go back into her car and everything was going to be copacetic. And you're starting to see the spirit of this place really turn, man. All right. Like the scriptures say in uh, Isaiah, the 19th chapter. All right. Matter of fact, before I get that, let me go to this. This is Jeremiah 51 and 8. Be Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And you know what? I'll say this as well. All right. The elites believe that this is all according to their plan. And they think that they're going to get this place close enough to the fire um, and then put the fire out and start a new world. You know, that's why they have the um, the symbol of the phoenix rising up from the ashes. They think that they're going to do a controlled burn of this society and then come out of the ashes on top and in control. And really, this is the Lord's algorithm man. this is the Lord's plan and agenda. And Esau, beginning with their elites, are the tool that the Lord is using to bring about a lot of these situations where you're going to have this economic collapse. And then in the end, when they believe that they finished and completed their agenda, the Lord is going to uh, uh, strike judgment upon them while they're eating, man, like it says in Job. All right. So there a, a lot of this uh, Babylon being wounded. And not being healed is um, a lot of controlled demolition, if you will, from the elites. But uh, first and foremost, it's of Yahweh by Shemel Shah, man. All right. Like this pipeline situation, you know, they blame it on Russia and it, it could very well be Russia. But a lot of things uh, point to it being um, a controlled demolition by the elites, man. All right. The scriptures say we never trust thine enemy. So we never put anything past them, man. All right. But when you see the spirit of these people, you understand that the things that were written aforetime were written and they are faithful and true. All right. This is Isaiah 19 and two. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof and I will destroy the council thereof and they shall seek to the idols. And they shall seek to the uh, idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards. All right. And through the spirit of Pavi by Shemel Shah, what you have uh, going on is the Lord allowing the spirit of Egypt to fail. All right. One thing that I have noticed through the spirit, man, is this broken reed uh, that the Lord has uh, called this place. You know, uh, for a long time, they dwelt with great pride because they believed that it was them that did this. You know, beginning with the uh, so-called white men and their elites. They believed that they were the cause of uh, of this society having dominion for a point in time. They think that they were the cause of them having power over other nations. And the Lord is removing the spirit. When you look at this whole system, the Lord is removing the spirit, even the elites. All right. They said that uh, Egypt would toss to and fro like a drunkard, man. All right. The spirit of this place is falling. Esau is getting more sloppy with his false flags. All right. It's harder for him to fool the people, even uh, his um, his ability to try to convince these uh, people to get the vaccine isn't as um, effective as it used to be. People used to believe him. They no longer believe him anymore, man. And that's an example of this place falling, man. This is a broken reed and it's almost finished, man. All right. Now, let me jump down to verse 14. The Lord have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. All right. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail branch or rush may do. All right. And this place is just uh, still in the midst of an unemployment situation. All right. Where a lot of people's jobs are still on on hold. A lot of people lost their jobs permanently. And Esau is using these little distractions to try to get people out of the reality that is one calamity after the other. When you really just sit back and look at it. Israel and Gaza, all of these different things are happening. And some of these things are controlled demolition. But Esau is falling, man. If you can receive it, if you can see it, 
even though his elites believe that they're controlling this situation, it's ultimately how Bashmiao Shah who's destroying this place. He's just allowing their pride to deceive them into believing that it's them and not the Heavenly Father, man. And what you saw in that video with this woman is how quickly things change, man. How quickly things go from bad to worse, man. And how quickly these people really lose their minds, man. This news came out, what, a few days ago, three or four days ago. And now you got people uh, in, in, in Costco lines wrapped around the building fighting and spitting on each other, man. Israel and, uh, and Hamas is going at it, which could be a provocation for a, a huge regional conflict. If the other sons of Ishmael get involved, it's a, it's, it's, it could be a huge conflict, man. And this is the system that our people trust in, man. When I go back to um, Isaiah, the 36th chapter, that is what it reminds me of, that our people have trusted in a broken reed. This place is falling. Babylon is not going to be healed. She's not going to make a, a, a comeback. How many more NBA finals are going to be in a bubble? All right. If you just sit back and look at this place, this place is losing its juice, man. It's losing its juice. Isaiah 36 and 6. No, I'll start at uh, 7. No, I'll start at 6. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. But if thou say to me, we trust in Yahweh by Shemel Shai, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah had taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar? Now, therefore, give pledges, I pray thee, to my to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? All right. When you go into the time of Isaiah, um, our people, um, even in the time of Jeremiah, our people were. Um, trying to find someone else to ally themselves with outside of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And a uh, common narrative is, is what happens with our people is that they try to make covenants and uh, seek help from the heathens. All right. Instead of the Lord. Even now, man, with, with these uh, Black Lives Matter movements and all of these different movements, these uh, group economic uh, uh, jakes. All right. These high value men of this world type of jakes. They all ultimately trust in this broken reed, man. And these two examples are just two of many uh, of, of signs that this place is falling, man. And our people can't discern the signs of the times. I mean, most people can't. Because in their minds, this place is going to go on forever. That there's eventually going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And this time it's not, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, man. And that's what this world fails to realize. All right. This is not going to be one of those uh, times where you look at the um, you, you almost, you know, one of those times where it was a close call. And that's what people believe. That's why people are still able to have a good time and still try to um, keep themselves distracted and upbeat and so-called positive. Because they ultimately believe that this is just another close call. Isaiah 26 and 9. And it reads, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. And right now we're in the midst of a slow burn. And like frogs in a boil in boiling water, the world, the majority of them, don't really understand what's going on. They don't really realize that we're going to pass a point of no return concerning the judgments of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And depending on where you land on that, once that ride begins, it doesn't end until you check out. For better or worse. And all of our people with all of the signs and all of the things that are being made apparent, our people still trust in this broken reed, man. They still don't lean on the uh, Holy One of Yasha Allah, man. Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And the Lord is showing us that uh, he's beginning to visit the world in which he made, man. All right. This is 2nd Edges chapter 9. All right. Now grab that. 2nd Edges 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. 
And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And when you really think about it from the end of 2019 um, up until now, it's really been a roller coaster of calamity after calamity after calamity. So much so that the majority of the population aren't even um, they're, they're desensitized to it. The mass shootings. Think about the bottom of 2019 until now, the amount of mass shootings, um, the, the storms, the earthquakes, you know, uh, the obvious one, which is the COVID and the quarantine and everything that happened around that. All of these things are hitting one after the other continuously. And it's really increasing when you stand back and think about it. Not just in Babylon, the great, which is America, but globally what's happening in uh, Colombia, what ha what's been happening in Venezuela. All of these different calamities, all of these different things are the signs of the times for those who can discern it, man. And this place is ma being made obvious that it is a broken reed it is a system that holds no more weight. All right. It is ready to fall. It is, it is ready to be taken and broken. And that is what the how Shai is about to do to this place, man. The love of many is waxing coal. All right. Matter of fact. This is second edge six and 24. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. All right. And Lord willing, we are a part of that number that we we may endure until the end and be the recipients of that blessing, man, of seeing that salvation. All right. But the point was in uh, verse 24 when it says friends shall fight one against another like enemies, because that's exactly what you have happening in the world right now. A lot of people are fighting like enemies, man. A lot of people are in um, in straits and this is only the beginning of sorrows. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.